the Annunciation of the Blessed Virgin Mary. This great festival takes its name from the happy tidings brought by the angel Gabriel to the Blessed Virgin concerning the incarnation of the Son of God. It commemorates the most important embassy that was ever known, an embassy sent from the King of Kings, performed by one of the chief princes of his heavenly court, directed not to the great ones of this earth, but to a poor, unknown virgin, who being endowed with the most angelic purity of soul and body, being perfectly humble and devoted to God, was greater in his eyes than the mightiest monarch in the world. When the Son of God became man, he could have taken upon him our nature without the cooperation of any creature. But he was pleased to be born of a woman. In the choice of her whom he raised to this most sublime of all dignities, he pitched upon the one who, by the riches of his grace and virtues, was of all others the most holy and the most perfect. The design of this embassy of the archangel is to give a savior to the world a victim of propitiation to the sinner a model to the just a son to this virgin remaining still a virgin and a new nature to the son of god the nature of man capable of suffering pain and anguish in order to satisfy god's justice for our transgressions when the angel appeared to mary to address her the blessed virgin was troubled not at the angel's appearance says st ambrose for heavenly visions in a commerce with the blessed spirits had been familiar to her but what alarmed her he says was the angel's appearing in human form in the shape of a young man what might add to her fright on the occasion was his addressing her in the words of praise mary guarded by her modesty is in confusion at the expressions of this sort and dreads the least appearance of deluded flattery such high commendations make her cautious how she answers till in silence she has more fully considered of the matter she resolved in her mind, says St. Luke, what manner of salutation this should be. Ah, what numbers of innocent souls have been corrupted for want of using the like precautions. The angel to calm her says, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor before God. He then informs her that she is to conceive and bring forth a son whose name shall be called Jesus, who shall be great, and the son of the Most High, and possessed of the throne of David, her illustrious ancestor mary out of a just concern to know how she may comply with the will of god without prejudice to her vow of virginity inquires how shall this be nor does she give her consent till the heavenly messenger acquaints her that it is to be a work of the holy ghost who in making her fruitful will not entrench in the least upon her virginal purity in submission therefore to god's will without any further inquiries she expresses her assent in these humble and powerful words behold the handmaid of the lord be it done to me according to thy word what faith and confidence does her answer express what profound humility and perfect obedience from the example of the blessed virgin in this mystery how ardent a love ought we to conceive of purity and humility the holy ghost is invited by purity to dwell in souls but is chased away by the filth of contrary vice humility is the foundation of a spiritual life by it mary was prepared for the extraordinary graces and all virtues with which she was enriched and for the eminent dignity of the mother of god